Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a rush analysis in SPSS. The data that I'm going to use uh, have been collected in the core project in Singapore uh, which was spearheaded by uh, Dr. Melvin Chen of the National Institute of Education. And some of the items that measure grammatical skills of students are presented here and I'll be using quite a few of them for the analysis. In order to do rush analysis in SPSS we need to do a few things first. First of all we need to install the R package version 3.5 on your PC. Uh, in some versions of SPSS you can also use 3 R, R, uh, R package version 3.3 the version that I'm using is uh, edition 26 of SPSS. Therefore, uh, it can support both R package of 3.5 and 3.6. For this demonstration, I'm going to use 3.5. How you can get R package 3.5 is from this link. Uh, you can download it from uh, this link here. I will leave it in the comments section of this video so you can install it quickly on your computer. After you install it on your computer you will see the icon 3.5. It will allow you to choose 64-bit uh, and 32-bit. What I have chosen is the 64 one as you can see from the name here. The next thing that you need to do after installing the R package is to install stats uh, R35 within SPSS. So as you see, SPSS doesn't have any Rush extension here by default. So we need to install that. We go to extensions, extension hub, and wait for this extension hub to respond. I hope my, comp uh, my internet is reliable today. After the connection is made with the extension hub, uh, this window pops up. We need to explore under non, not installed extensions or packages. Uh, maybe sort them by name so it's, it's going to be easier for you to find the package we're looking for. That's stats R35. So we should scroll down to find stats R35. We have three R packages available for us under SPSS, R33, R35, and R36. So that's 3.6, 3.5, and 3.3. The one that I've already installed on my computer is 3.5. If you click on more information, you get more information here about who has developed it and you know the sort of R package you're looking at. So just click Get Extension and uh, click OK. You should accept terms and conditions, otherwise you cannot install it. And finish. Now you can check if the extension has been properly installed. You click on Extensions, and you should now be able to see R3.5 configuration window. In the next step, we need to configure uh, the R package that, that you have already installed. So click on this option. In this menu you should look for the folder in which R3.5 has been installed. That's the home directory of R. The home directory of R on my computer is this. So let me just copy and paste it into here. So it's very easy uh, basically to find where the home directory of R is. Just go to uh, drive C, most likely it's been installed in drive C under users, look for uh, your own name and then uh, th I think you should, after that you should look for installed programs or something like that, a folder like that, inside which you should be able to find R and just copy and paste uh, the uh, address and just paste it here. Okay, now I'm going to click OK. So it has been configured now because I don't see an error message and hopefully I will not get an error message. The next step is 
to go to this R package that I have already installed on my computer and uh, oh, even oh sorry before that you need to install another package within SPSS it's called SPSS Inc. Rash okay so uh, I'm going back to SPSS I'm going back to extensions extension hub So connection is being made at this time. Okay, the connection is now uh, has been established. Um, so under this menu on, of Explore, again I go through Not Installed and I look for SPSS. Let, let me sort them by name: SPSS Inc. Rash, and I have to scroll further down. I found the package SPSS Inc. Rash. I click on Get Extension and then click OK because that's the only extension we need and click I accept the terms and condition and click finish. This message, message tells me that the extension has been successfully installed and there are no failures. That's pretty good news. Click OK. And this is the output the results of what you have already installed. You can go to Analyze under Scale. You can see now Rush model is accessible from this menu. Now let's uh, click on Rush model so the yeah the window will appear and you can run the analysis in different ways. Okay. At this stage, um, what you need to do is to transfer the items to the item section and just, you know, click OK and run the analysis. Before doing that, however, um, since I've done this before a few times, I anticipate that um, if you have not installed these three packages on your on your uh, R three point five, you're gonna get an error message in SPSS. So before running Rush analysis uh, within SPSS at this point, I suggest that you use these three command files, copy and paste them into R and run them. So the first thing is install uh, the package LTM. So just copy and paste here, click enter and this window just choose Australia or other mirrors D doesn't really make a big difference just click OK that's the first package which is now installed the second package is MSM copy paste okay the second one is also installed and finally the third one which is installed packages polycord as polychoric correlations and install it install that as well okay uh, so I mean it's being installed uh, for the time being I think we can wait for a while okay the package has been installed successfully now we can go back to SPSS and everything is now ready because you have gone through these steps as you see. So SPSS, scale, uh, rush model. I've already moved these five items to this item box. Make sure that the items that you choose are binary because uh, this package does not handle uh, right, uh, partial credit scores. So it's binary or dichotomous meaning that your scores are either zero and one or one or two, etc. On the output, I have chosen everything here, and I will go through the output one by one. You need to have a summary, item, item fit, descriptives, factor scores, item characteristic curves, and item information curves. We don't want to save anything really because it's not necessary. Continue. What you could do under discrimination parameter is to either estimate it or fix the value. Since I'm going to do a rush analysis, a pure rush analysis, I'm going to fix the value to 1. 
and that's the usual uh, fixed value that we use for rush analysis and click OK. Okay, and this is the output of the analysis. Let's go through it quickly. The first thing we see is that two global fit statistics have been provided. They're not commonly used in, in the context of rush analysis. They're more common in item response theory. Uh, I'm planning to make videos about item response theory and will release them soon. Uh, but uh, just in short, a Kaike information criterion or AIC and uh, Bayesian information criterion BIC should be small. The smaller they are, the better the fit of the model. So you need to have two or three models or more to compare the fit statistics, among which then you'll, f you'll choose uh, the model that has got the, small, the smaller or the smallest AIC and BIC. Currently, since we are not doing model comparisons, these two are not useful at all. For coefficients, as you see, the value or the difficulty level of of uh, item two is minus 2.522. That's in logits. What I suggest is you double click on uh, this, uh, this table, highlight these statistics for the five items, right click, go to create graphs, and you can create um, very interesting graphs in SPSS. For example, you can create a uh, line graph, and here's the line graph. Again, you can double click on this line graph and, and click on this, uh, show data labels, and close it. The data labels will be shown. I'm gonna close this again, and the, the graph is more interesting and more interactive. In this way, you can see the, the most difficult item is item three. Uh, that's very visually easy to identify it quickly. With a difficulty level of 1.28 logits, and the easiest one, as you saw earlier, is item two, with a difficulty level of minus 2.522 logits. There is a standard error for each of these difficulty statistics, which means that the difficulty that's estimated falls within minus plus 0 0.84 for item two. And this difficulty, which is minus 1.167, falls between uh, 0.061 plus and minus this statistic. Then we also have a standardized z-value for it. You can scroll down further, and we are looking at the fit statistics. SPSS at this point does not output infit and outfit mean square values. Uh, it just provides us with a chi-square value here. Uh, so we only have things which are very similar to z-scores in uh, other software packages like WinSteps, which I have talked about in some details in other videos. So this indicates that uh, the fit of all of these items is statistically significantly deviating from the expectations of the Rush model. So there's some anomaly in the data. However, we also know that in large data sets, this kind of chi-square and a significant significance value can get inflated. My data set is pretty large. It's above 100, uh, 1,800 uh, participants. Therefore, I, will, I would look at these fit statistics with a pinch of salt and I would not perhaps uh, rely on them too much. The other very interesting output of SPSS is this G gra uh, R graph. The R graph is uh, plotting total scores against uh, proportion correct of all items. For example, for uh, the total score of three, this is how the items are arranged um, in terms of the proportion correct. If your ability level is estimated to be around three logits, then, or your total score, I mean not logic, the total score is three, then uh, uh, you'll see that people who um, are at this level, um, item, um, the proportion correct of these people for item three is around 0 0.2. That's, they have answered 
item 3, 20% uh, of them have answered item 3 correctly. For item 5, around 40% have answered it correctly. And for item 4, around something close to 60%. Item 2 is something pretty close to 95% or so. For item 1 is almost everybody. It's not 100%, but as you see, it's pretty close. So if your total score is 3, uh, for item 1, you will have a very high chance to answer the questions correctly. And as you see, item 1 is not a very difficult item. It's actually pretty easy to answer. Okay, so we go further down to this graph, which is a kernel density information. It's somehow similar or reminiscent of right map, but only one part of the right map, the distribution of persons and personability. Uh, ideally, we would have the distribution of our items right at the bottom here, but we don't have it currently. As you see, people are uh, clustering around the mean, almost so. Let me draw this for you. The majority of our sample is around here. It's almost between minus one and plus one logits. And this is the mean of the sample. That's how you can interpret this table. This is a very useful, uh, this graph, this, this is a very useful graph. The next one is the famous uh, item characteristic curves. As you see, they're like S-shaped or OGI kind of curves. For um, item 3R, if your ability level is zero, your chances of answering the, uh, let me draw this for you. If your ability level is zero, for this item, you have a low chance of answering the item correctly because the probability is around 0 0.2. For this one, which is item four, you will have a slightly higher chance to answer the item correctly. But compare this with item two, as you see. If you have only the ability of around zero, you will st still stand a very high chance to answer the item correctly. This is another way of uh, comparing the difficulty level of items. And as you see, the slopes of the items are the same, as that's one of the features of rush measurement in which we keep the slopes consistent for all items. And finally, this is one of uh, the very useful uh, graphs, item information curves. And information basically can be translated into how construct valid the test scores are, or the, uh, how construct valid the items are. For example, for this item, G2, uh, the people who fall around this area under the curve, because this is the area where you'll get a lot of information about people. The area under the curve is larger for the people under this area roughly. So this item is the most, uh, has the most or the highest level of construct validity in this region. In the same way, you can say that item number two, I'm going to choose um, this red color, item number two has a very high level of construct validity in this region or slightly more than this region. Meaning that for those people whose ability level is in this region is something slightly smaller than uh, minus smaller than minus two logits and between let's say minus two and slightly smaller than zero, uh, zero uh, their ability level will be estimated with a high higher amount of uh, construct validity that's how you can interpret it and, and link it with the idea of construct validity so this brings me to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful uh, and, and uh, you can use it in your future analysis. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll come back with more uh, interesting statistical analysis in SPSS. Have a good day.